Hello, wonderful students. Welcome to Mr. Maestas and my video today is about conic sections and this is part two or I guess it's uh, part two and a half, part three. It's, uh, it's one of three parts of conic sections and we're dealing today with ellipses and hyperbolas. So you should be able to sketch the graph of an ellipse or a hyperbola given the standard form. That's what we'll do today. And just so you can have a little bit of recall, we already did parabolas and we did circles in a previous video. And in another video, I also showed you how to convert from uh, any form into standard form so that you can graph it. Everything in this case will be in standard form. So let's take a look at some examples here. First thing is we need to know what an ellipse looks like. Well, here's an ellipse. It's like an oval. Here's the general form of an ellipse, very similar to a circle, only having these a squareds and b squareds underneath the x minus h and the y minus k squared. Well, in this case, h, my, h comma k is the center, and I use center very loosely because it's not quite a center, but uh, we'll call it a center. And a is the horizontal, again, these are in quotes, horizontal radius in quotes. These should be in quotes also. It's not really a radius because a radius implies it's all the same, and they're not. This is the horizontal, and this is the vertical, and you should see what that means because obviously you see that this oval here is shorter this way than it is this way. So we'll talk about how we draw that in the coordinate plane. Now, a couple things to remember. There's something called the major axis, and that's basically the longer radius. Uh, I wouldn't get caught up, and this is number three, don't get caught up in where the A and the B are under the X or the Y. Really, what's important is which one is bigger. The bigger number, whether it's under the X or under the Y, will tell you whether it's the major, meaning the longer radius, or the minor, meaning the shorter radius. Let's take a look. All right, so we got this equation here x plus 2 squared over 4 plus y minus 1 squared over 9 equals 1. Let's graph this. Oh, one thing to remember is an, an ellipse is always going to have a 1 here. Um, and it looks like a circle because that's a plus. So let's, uh, let's graph it and then identify the major and minor axis. So we're going to first find the center. Find your center. My center is negative 2, 1. So I'm going to go negative 2, 1. And there's my center. Okay, then I'm going to look under the x. X is left and right, so we're going to go. We're going to, this is uh, a squared, so in this case, a is equal to 2, right? Because 2 squared is 4. So if a is 2, what that tells me is that because x, x again is left and right, right? When we're looking at the x axis, it's down here. So I'm going to go left and right from my center two units. So I'm going to go two units this way, two units this way, and draw dots. This one is nine, so you probably guessed this. B is going to be three because three squared is nine. So I'm going to go up and down three units. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to draw my ellipse. Notice that it looks like an oval. So what's the major axis? What's the length? Identify the length. This should be the length of the major axis. Well, the length of the major axis is going to be, let's see, the major, this is the long one, right? This right here and this right here. So since the radius, you know, quote unquote radius is three, and this is three, the length of the major axis is six. The length of the minor axis is going to be four because it's two and two, all right? The minor axis in this case is the one that is horizontal and the major axis in this case is the one that's vertical. So that's the only thing really that you wanna keep in mind is that it really has to do with where these squares are and once you graph it, you can easily find the major and minor axes. Let's take a look at the next topic, which is hyperbolas. Now hyperbolas, their general form is similar to the ellipse. They have a one here, we have an a squared and a b squared, uh, but the difference between a hyperbola and an ellipse 
is that there's a minus here. And we know that subtraction is not commutative. So it really does depend where this minus is, whether it is in front of the y squared or in front of the x squared. B, I'm going to always put under the y. And A, I'm going to always put under the x. And the reason for that is because the B over A is going to give me the slope of my asymptotes. And you'll see what I mean by the asymptotes in just a second when I draw it. But an easy way to remember this is that, look, slope is rise over run, right? It's change in y over change in x. So I'm just going to take the number that's below the y, that's going to go on top, and the number that's below the x, well, the square root of the number, and that's going to go on the bottom. So it's y over x. Same, same type of thing for my slope. Now, if your x is first, and it's not negative in front, then your hyperbola is going to go left and right, meaning it's going to look like this and like this. If your y comes first and your negative is in front of the x, it's going to go up and down, meaning it's going to look like this and like this. And just think of it this way. y is positive, so y, remember, goes up and down. x goes left and right. That's how you remember where it goes. HK is really is the center, and I mean center very loosely here because we don't really have a center of a hyperbola, but you'll see what I mean when we go to graph it, what center means. So let's go ahead and graph one. And what we're going to do here is we're going to first find our center. Find your center. In this case, it's negative 2, 1, so just like the other one. So negative 2, 1's right here. Now we're going to find our A. Now look, this is important. X is first. So I know that my, my hyperbola is going to look something like this. Okay, this is important when we get when we get there, so A is 2, and B is 9, I mean 3, sorry, because 3 squared is 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did with my ellipse. My ellipse, I took two units and went from my cent center, two units to the left, put a point, two units to the right, put a point. And I'm going to do the same thing for my Y. I'm going to go three units up three units down. And I recommend you draw a rectangle that connects these four points. Okay? Now, if you don't want to draw the rectangle, you can always do this as well. You could find the slope, the slope of the asymptotes, and the slope of the asymptotes, again, is plus or minus b, which is 3, over a, which is 2. So what I do is from this center, I would go up 3. I didn't go up all the way. Sorry, guys. On this one, I need to go up 3. I can go up 3 over 2 to the corner, down 3 over 2 to the corner, and draw myself a line Okay, so I'm going to draw a line, that's not my line thing, that goes right through here. Okay, that's one asymptote. And I could do the same thing here. I can go up, that was a positive slope, and then I do the negative slope. So up three over two, and then I get this line here. Okay, let's see if I can draw that line here. So I got this line here that connects the corners. Let me get a little bit more precise here and move this so that way I can have it through the corners. Okay, this one too, this has got to go through the corners. Okay, and now these are my asymptotes, right? So normally I would um, denote asymptotes with dotted lines. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with dashed lines. Okay, so I've got these asymptotes and I'm going, I know that I need to draw this hyperbola I need to draw this hyperbola sideways. So here's what you do. You touch this rectangle that you drew, and you draw the hyperbola towards your asymptotes. Same thing here, touch the rectangle. It's kind of tangent to the rectangle. These are the vertices of your hyperbola. And go out towards, and there is your hyperbola, okay? 
So let me, let me just go back really quickly and restate what I want you to do for this. You take and get the center. Then you go up 3 over 2 because these were your B over A. Or you can draw your rectangle exactly the same you did like the ellipse. You went up 3, down 3, over 2, over 2. All right, draw this little rectangle. Make asymptotes through the corners of your rectangle and the center. And then, depending if you need to go up or down or left or right, you use the edges of the rectangle right across from the center right here as your vertex, vertices and you go towards your asymptotes. All right, I'd like you to try a couple of practice problems. So here are two practice problems. I'm gonna pause the video right now and then, or you should pause the video right now because I'm gonna give a couple of seconds and then I'm gonna draw these solutions to your answer so you could check to see if you're right, okay? All right, here are the answers to the practice problems. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you got what you needed. And uh, if you were in my class, make sure you go to the whisk link and you do your whisk. And uh, I will see you tomorrow or on Monday or whenever <laughs> you watch this video. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.